Good morning, EM. Welcome to Online Church this morning. Thank you for joining me. I don't know if you're watching this as it's being premiered, or maybe you're watching it later in the day or later in the week, but whatever the case is, welcome, and thank you for joining me as we open God's Word and worship Him this morning. Uh, I know there's been a lot of stuff going on this past week. New restrictions, schools have switched back to online. Uh, I don't know how you're doing and how you're feeling about all these things, um, but for me it's been really helpful to just focus on the little things in my life that I can be thankful for. Uh, amidst all the change, there's still some things that God has placed in my life that have been getting me through. Things like my wife, Chelsea, um, my two little dogs that bring me a lot of joy and sometimes frustration, but mostly do joy. <laughs> And then just the fact that I'm healthy. I mean, those are just good things to focus on. Uh, so if you have th things in your life to focus on and be thankful uh, for, um, then that's really good. And I encourage you to do that. But um, if you don't, you can't think of anything, uh, we're going to have our In Case You Missed It segment. So here are some uplifting stories from the past week that maybe can um, make you a little bit happier and give you some things to be thankful to God for. So... First up, in case you missed it, a fashion company in Russia is trying to reduce the amount of garbage in their city by turning all that garbage into recycled accessories and school supplies. They're currently selling things like laptop cases, backpacks, and even bicycles, all made from recyclable material. And next up, in case you missed it, this video of a bunch of puppies trying to fit themselves into a bucket went viral. And you know that I have to show you a cute animal video just because I find them, they're awesome. And this one is just so cute, I couldn't resist showing you, so here it is. And finally, in case you missed it, NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal paid off an engagement ring for some random stranger in a jewelry store that he overheard was having trouble paying for this engagement ring. He decided to buy it for the young man. Uh, what cost Shaq very little meant a lot to this man and now his future wife. And now that's all the uplifting stories that I have for you from this past week. So hopefully, despite all we see in the news and all that's going on in our own lives, uh, hopefully you're encouraged to say, wow, God, you're so cool. And there are things going on in our world that we can be thankful for. So now here is your meme of the week. And also, here is your song of the week. You can check this song out on our shared Spotify playlist. Just search up EM First Korean Playlist and you'll find it there. Now, I don't have any announcements for us this morning, so we're going to jump right into our message today. Today, we're continuing our series, Next is Now, looking at the story of Joshua and what it can tell us about handling seasons of change. So get comfortable, get your tea or pour a bowl of cereal, and let's get started. I want to say thank you for being here with me as we open God's Word together now. My hope is that today God will bless you with a message that you need to hear and that he'll also bless you with his presence. Because whenever we open God's Word, God is there to meet with us and he wants to speak into our lives. So today we are continuing our series, Next is Now. 
And in this series, we've been looking at Joshua's story and how God called Joshua up to replace Moses as Israel's new leader in order to lead them into the promised land. Now, this was a time of change for the people of Israel. They were getting a new leader, but it was also a time of change for Joshua, who was stepping up. You know, last week we talked about how God didn't just randomly choose Joshua, right? He didn't go any mini miny mo and just pick a random leader to replace Moses. No, he was actually in working in Joshua's life for over 40 years behind the scenes, preparing him for this exact moment to step up. And we looked at how this applies to our lives in seasons of change, when we're waiting to graduate or we're waiting for the pandemic to be over. Like Joshua, God is at work in our lives, even right now when we feel like we're not really making any progress and we're just waiting for things to get better. And so because of that, there's this calling on our lives, like Joshua, to be obedient and to trust God even here in the now as we wait for the next. So that was last week. Today, we are going to switch gears a little bit and talk about how to deal with the doubt and anxiety that comes with change. So as we're here in the now waiting for the next, there might be some doubt or anxiety going on, uh, whether it's because we're graduating soon and we're a little bit nervous about going to college. Maybe uh, it's because we're starting a new job. Whatever change is going on or as we're waiting for change, um, we might be feeling a little bit anxious and doubtful. So today we're going to ask the question, how did Joshua handle his doubt and his anxiety? He most certainly experienced that when he was stepping up to be Israel's new leader. That wasn't an easy task, and so he probably felt anxious and, and doubted himself. And so what does God tell us, and what can God tell us right now as we might be experiencing anxiety and doubt as well? Well, before we jump into it, I just want to invite you. It's always good to invite God into the conversation that we're having, so I invite you right now. Uh, let's just bow our heads and quickly um, pray before we get into it. Lord, there's a lot going on in our world right now, uh, but we know that as we gather here, even online, you are present and you want to meet with us and show us something helpful and life-changing in your word. We believe that, and so we ask that you would help us right now to put aside our distractions and to surrender this time and space to hear from you. We want to hear from you, God. And so I ask that you bless us this morning. You are an incredible God who cares more about us than we can ever know, knows exactly the situations we're in our, li in our lives, you know exactly what's going on, and you know exactly what today. So today we say thank you, and we're excited for what you're going to say to us. And we pray all this in Jesus' name, for his sake and his glory. Amen. I want to start by asking you this. Have you ever been fearful of a new task someone gave you? Like maybe you were asked to play a new position. If you're on a, a sports team, maybe the coach asked you to play a, a role on your team that you're not familiar with, a position you're not familiar with. Or maybe your parents came and, and told you they wanted you to take an advanced math or science class that you were a little bit scared to take. Or maybe right now you're heading to college and you're really worried about that. That's a new task that someone has given you. Whatever the situation is, whatever the task is, most of us have been in that place where we're forced to learn or adapt quickly. And that's kind of the situation that Joshua finds himself in. Moses, okay? Moses has led the nation and he's led it well. And now God is calling Joshua to lead Israel. And Moses led God's people out of Israel. Now Joshua has the burden or the task of leading God's people into the promised land. That's not an easy thing to do. He's got to lead a whole nation into some new land and start a whole uh, civilization, basically, um, by leading them. And so what a task. What a task that God has given Joshua. And we know for a fact, because Joshua was human, he probably felt nervous. He probably doubted himself. And we know that because of what God God says to him in the passage we're going to read that he needed encouragement. He needed someone to speak into him because he was doubting and anxious. And so some of the questions that Joshua was probably asking himself is, am I good enough? What, what happens if I fail? You know, why me? Why has God picked me? The amazing thing is 
though, that God takes into consideration our fears and doubts, and he is willing to take the time to encourage us when we need it. And that's exactly what God does with Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verses 7 to 9. So I invite you, if you want to read our passage, just a few verses this morning, um, but uh, I encourage you, or else I'll just put it on the screen for you so you can read it off of there. But Joshua chapter 1, verses 7 to 9, this is what God tells Joshua. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips and meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I know most of you know this already, but I have anxiety, okay? which means I am constantly struggling with those kinds of questions like, am I good enough? Can I do this? And I know that a lot of you struggle with the same questions when things happen, when things change, whether it's graduation or going to a new school. And the thing is, as psychologists have found that more and more young people are experiencing high levels of anxiety and doubt. Now, I'm not an expert, um, so I can't tell you why that's happening, why there's more doubt and anxiety among young people. But if I had to wager a guess, I'd say it's because we live in a world that is constantly telling us to do better and be better. Those are kind of the two messages we receive over and over in our culture. You know, just look at advertising, right? What is advertising? Well, how do they get you to buy a product? They, they tell you that your life won't be the same unless you have this new purse or this new shoe, right? They try to sell you on it and say that your life is not fulfilled until you have what they're selling. And so whether it's media or even parents and teachers, sometimes they play into this. There's this message that we always hear, which is you are not good enough. And you know what ends up happening when you hear that over and over and over? Well, what ends up happening is that you start to believe it and you start thinking it. And not only that, you start telling yourself that message. You start telling yourself that you're not good enough. Now, some people have caught on to this, including psychologists. And so there's this huge movement to combat what they call negative thinking. So when you're telling yourself you're not good enough, you know, you can't do it, um, or you're hearing those messages, that's negative thinking. And so they want to combat this and change your thinking or our thinking so that we can be more positive about things. So you've probably seen this on Instagram or YouTube. There's uh, a famous YouTube group on uh, our YouTube channel called Yes Theory. I don't know if you guys have ever watched it, but their whole thing is about positive thinking, positive vibes, which I don't understand. I'm never going to use that term again, but <laughs> positive vibes, whatever that means. Um, and so they're all about that, right? And you've probably heard messages on Instagram or on Snapchat, what, wherever you get your messages from. <laughs> uh, you've probably heard this be said to you before. Uh, believe in yourself. You can do anything that you set your mind to. Maybe you have friends who have told you that. Believe in yourself. And it sounds really good, right? It sounds awesome. Um, and, and, and this is kind of the thing that they want to combat the negative thinking with, is believe in yourself. You can do anything. Now, let me tell you what the problem with saying that is. Although it sounds really good, um, look again at what God tells Joshua in verse 9. Okay? He says this to Joshua, who's feeling anxious, who's doubting himself. God says this. He says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. Now, do you think that God here is telling Joshua to believe in himself? Is God saying, hey, Joshua, you can do anything you set your mind to. You can lead these people in the promised land as long as you believe in yourself. No, he, he's not saying that, right? And we know that because God says, be courageous, be unafraid. Why? Look at the rest of the verse. It says, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So in other words, God doesn't say believe in yourself. He says 
believe in me. Believe in your God, Joshua, because I will be with you no matter what. I will help you and I will strengthen you. Don't be afraid. So here's the thing. The world's idea of positive thinking, although it sounds really good, saying this kind of thing like believe in yourself is wrong because it's self-focused. It's not God-focused, right? Um, thinking that way makes us the most important thing. If we can do it, if we can do anything we set our minds to, if we just believe in ourselves, it just makes it all about us. Now you might be wondering, well, if that's the case, then what should I tell myself? How do I combat negative thinking um, and doubting myself and anxiety? Well, there's a different kind of positive thinking that might surprise you that's not new at all. Psychologists have kind of brought up this positive thinking thing as if it's new. There's a kind of positive thinking that comes to us way back from the time of Scripture, <laughs> of the time of Jesus. See, psychologists and researchers, they say, wow, look at this positive thinking. It's great. It really helps people who have anxiety and doubt. But the funny thing is, is that this kind of thing has actually been around for thousands of years. It's not new. In fact, what the Bible has to say about positive thinking is much more powerful as well. Check this out. Look at verse 8 again, okay? What does God tell Joshua to do while he's feeling anxious and doubting his ability to lead God's people? What does he tell him to do? Well, he says this, he says, keep this book of the law, scripture, always on your lips. And there's a key word here, meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that is written, it, written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So what does God tell Joshua to do? Well, he says, meditate, meditate on the word. Now, this isn't the only place that the Bible says that. Look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Here, Paul talks about the peace of God, how to experience the peace of God. And the question is, uh, well, how, how do we experience God's peace? Well, Paul says, he gives us an answer in verse 8. He says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, worthy, key word here, Think about such things. The word think there also means to meditate. So again, we get this message, meditate. And Paul says that if you want God's peace, then meditate on things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. And you might be wondering, what is Paul talking about here? Well, he's talking about Jesus. He's talking about Christ. He's talking about meditating on God's word. So, Paul is saying the same thing that God told Joshua. Be courageous and strong. How? By meditating on God's word. But how does thinking about or meditating on God's word, how does it work? What does it mean? You know, what is meditation? <laughs> What does that word mean? Isn't that something that like people who do yoga, they just sit there with their legs crossed and their arms up, right? And they start floating off the ground because they're meditating? No, no, not exactly. That's not really meditation. In fact, we actually meditate all the time. You might not realize it. We meditate all the time. You might be wondering, well, what are you talking about? What do you mean I meditate all the time? Well, this is what I mean. Meditation just means to think about something over and over again. You see, the mind is a very powerful thing. And, and what happens when you go through a breakup? What happens when you get a bad grade on a test or lose a friend over some silly argument or face a situation that's new and scary? What happens? You think about it over and over, right? That's what happens. You meditate on it. It's a form of meditation. And when you think about it over and over, you begin to get trapped in those thoughts. And those thoughts start to become facts that you start to believe in, and they start to show up in how you live your life. Let's take a breakup, for example, okay? 
When you and someone, uh, or you and someone break up, okay, that you've been dating, you start thinking about all the things that went wrong. You start thinking about how you could have done better. Uh, you might even start thinking about how you'll never find someone else as great as them. And those thoughts, what begins to happen is you get trapped in them and you think about them over and over and over. You meditate on them and eventually those thoughts become facts that you start to believe in and you start thinking, you know, there's something wrong with me. I'll never find anyone. I'm not good enough. And so psychologists say this is the problem with negative thinking. And this is why we need positive thinking. Jesus, though, I think says it better. He says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, he says, For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. And where Jesus talks about the heart, the same thing applies to the mind. The way we think shows up in the way that we live. And this is why God tells Joshua and tells you and I to meditate on his word. Here's a little analogy to help us better understand this. I don't know how many of you drink tea out there, but we all know how tea bags work. Well, hopefully you do. <laughs> when you make a tea, or when you make tea, you fill up a cup with boiling water first, and then you put the tea bag in, right? Or maybe you put the tea bag in first and then pour hot water on it. However you do it, you have hot water in a tea bag. Um, and this is kind of like an analogy for meditation, right? See, the, the tea is only drinkable because the hot water takes time to sit there and the tea infuses into the hot water. You know, the tea would not be drinkable if you tried to drink it right away. It would just be like really, really diluted tea. <laughs> and so in a way, we're the cup. We're the cup of hot water and God's word is like a tea bag. The best way to meditate is to allow our mind to sit and soak up what we read and hear about scripture so that we can be a fully saturated person of faith, someone who trusts God and someone who's obedient to God. See, again, your mind is a powerful thing. And when we experience change or uncertainty in life, it's important to not just get trapped in that negative thinking, but instead to combat that with positive thinking. Um, but better than that, I would say combat it with biblical thinking. When you do that, the lie that you know says, I can't do it, becomes all things are possible with God. The, the lie, no one likes me, no one will ever like me, becomes God so loved the world that he sent his son to die for me. The lie that says I can't do it becomes the Lord is my strength. Those are all things that come from scripture. And if we spent more time thinking on those things, they would eventually become beliefs and then they eventually show up in the way that we live our lives. And they would enable us to be strong, courageous, and trusting in God and his, in his promises. See, often the problem is we focus too much on our problems. We focus on our doubts, our needs, our troubles. However, when we focus on the eternal words of God, on Jesus Christ, and think on them, meditate on them, we will then spend less time worrying about our troubles. And so meditating on God's words switches us from being self-focused to being God-focused. I want to say one more thing this morning. And that's this. Immediately after God encouraged Joshua, in the very next verses, Joshua went out and encouraged the leaders in Israel. If you want to read it, you can. It's just in the next um, couple verses um, from what we read today. Uh, he encouraged the leaders, and then the leaders went and encouraged the rest of the nation of Israel. And see, what we learn from this is that sometimes we can be so problem and anxiety focused that we forget to look beyond ourselves. 
See, if Joshua just stayed in that place of worry, ruminating in his thoughts, meditating on all these negative things, then he'd never be able to tackle all that God had just put in front of him as the new leader of Israel. And he also wouldn't have been able to encourage other people. The whole nation of Israel was going through a time of change. It wasn't just about Joshua. They lost their leader, Moses. And now there's this new guy, this young punk, stepping up to lead the nation of Israel. And could you imagine if Israel never took the time to encourage the people of Israel? That would have been a big mess. But because Joshua was encouraged by God, he could then go and encourage the people that he was leading. And so, yes, our problems are real and genuine, but sometimes we can be so focused on ourselves that we don't see that our best friend, our mom and dad, or even the youth leader that we have is struggling as well and needs to be encouraged. So as we close this morning, I want to ask you two questions. The first one is, are you soaking your mind in God's word? Are you soaking your mind in God's word like a tea bag <laughs> to help fight against anxiety and doubt that you um, experience, especially during seasons of change, especially right now when we're living through a whole pandemic, which is a whole season of uncertainty and change? And the second question is who can you encourage this week? Again, we're living during a pandemic. There are so many people around us. If we only open our eyes, there are so many people around us who need to be encouraged, not just us. And so who, who in your life needs you to speak words of life into? Because God wants to use you to encourage them. So those are my two questions. Are you soaking your mind in God's word? And who can you encourage this week? Now, I'll leave us with this. If you haven't been listening, or you tuned out, or you fell asleep, <laughs> pay attention now, because this is what I want us to walk away with this morning. If we start meditating on God's word now, then when we are faced with change or a new task, we will be courageous and bold, because we won't be thinking, I can't do this, and instead, we'll know that Christ is with us, that he is our strength, and that he won't let us down. Amen. And I invite you to bow your heads, and let's close in prayer. Oh God, we live in a time of so much uncertainty and so much change. Even in the just the past few months, a lot of us experienced the back and forth of going to school and then going back online and going back to school and then now going back online again. And God, there's so much happening in our lives that many of us are feeling discouraged. Many of us are feeling anxious. And we're not sure if we can do all that is asked of us right now. Maybe we have school to get finished. Maybe we're thinking about um, graduation coming up and what the, the next part of our lives is going to look like. And we're just filled with anxiety and we're filled with doubt and we're stuck in that negative thinking pattern where we're telling ourselves we can't do it, that we're not good enough. God, whoever is in that place this morning, this message is for them and I pray that you would encourage them, just like you encouraged Joshua when he stepped up to be the new leader of Israel, just like you encourage us always in our faith, whenever we are down, whenever we are desperate, God, you show up. That is your promise. And so I pray for whoever it is that is feeling discouraged, that you would come and encourage them right now through your Holy Spirit. And God, ultimately, I pray that we would learn to meditate on your word, to read our Bibles, because God, the only way for us to think about these things more and more is if we're reading them. And so, uh, God, I pray that you would give us in our hearts a deep desire to learn and to read more of your word, to spend that time with you so that we can combat all the negative messages we hear in this life with your life-giving words that come from Scripture. 
And may, be, may that be the truth that we live by. May that be what we tell ourselves when we're experiencing times of discouragement. Because we know from your word that you are with us and that you won't forsake us and you won't leave us and that you died for us and that you love us more than we could ever imagine. God, we want to say thank you for your message this morning. I pray that you'd be with us in our small groups as we gather later today. And we just lift the rest of this day up to you. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.